So I would like to you to close your eyes and breathe in. Imagine yourself at home when you're a child and think about who did you dream to be as a child? Well, probably someone imagined yourself uh, at home grabbing the cat, trying to fix the pow that actually not broken with a toilet paper, and then proudly announce on the kitchen to your parents, I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> so then your, your, your parents would be telling you, okay, then you need to spend six years uh, studying first part of the uh, knowledge, then five years more, and then every year you will be studying something more. And it's like, okay, nah, maybe, maybe driver, yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, it's usually happened to us that when our dream professional comes from a game and environment we uh, grow, and sometimes it's out of the passion, sometimes it's from the kick of our parents uh, to the kind of like, very respectful and well-paid profession. So let's think about how we need to, how, how we should deal with the profession we choose. And my profession comes from the mushroom. <laughs> um, I was four and was very curious uh, about what my mom was doing because at uh, that time uh, normally people were making them close themselves. And I was super interested in the process and my mom already at four years old decided to draw the mushroom on the uh, piece of cloth and um, she showed me the first steps how to stitch and then left me there for two hours. She came back and sewed the mushrooms, embroidered it. So definitely my mom found the way how to get rid of me and make me busy for two hours at least. So she decided to keep showing me the techniques. <laughs> so then they show, she showed me how to knit, then she showed me how to uh, so, and uh, I started to make clothes for my uh, Barbie doll, my uh, other animals at home, and um, kids in the kindergarten and in school, they were like, oh, can I, can I get one? And I was like, yeah, sure, candies. <laughs> That's my first business. <laughs> I started to trade the clothes I made to the goodies at school. But my real uh, upcycling um, uh, project happened to me when I was 14. My neighbor, old lady, she asked me to transform her uh, big jacket into a smaller jacket for her granddaughter. Okay, that's easy. So just take apart the um, jacket, take the smaller uh, size um, paper patterns, put it on the fabric, make new jacket, and I was super proud of my job. And I was like, I'm gonna ask a lot of money. So it was like 500 rubles. It's a lot, seriously. And I told her the price and she was like, oh, you teach me, you taught me kind of like a thing that I need to ask price before I actually start the process. And I was like, yes, and I learn amazing thing. I can just take the fabric that exists and I don't need to buy it, transform something old into something new and get paid. Business model. <laughs> but from the moment where the business model was, uh, was created to the moment where I actually get into realization, yeah, of course, it's uh, normally like 10 years, right? So, obviously, my first, uh, when I got graduated from the university, my first job was uh, designer for the denim, oopsie, uh, denim department, kids' clothes, and uh, denim jeans is amazing material. Sometimes you, the cotton grow in Pakistan, and um, uh, the fabric made in uh, Bangladesh, then it's sewn in China, then it's washed in Cambodia, and then it's arrived to Italy, they put the buttons, say, made in Italy. <laughs> so it's just like, wow, I wanna know how jeans are made. So my dream was at that job, just to travel to China and see how fabric is made, how they wash it, how they brush it, it's an amazing process. But that you to understand that at that moment we didn't have any YouTube and of course it was just like a kind of dream to learn uh, how it's made and go to China and I never went to China with this company, so I got bored and quit this job without any idea what I'm gonna do. Uh, three days later, I got a call Hello. Uh, we know that you can uh, make costumes. 
It's like, yeah, yes, I used to dance um, on the stage. I know how to make costumes. Can you come to China for four months and make a fake Victoria's Secret show? <laughs> sure. <laughs> of course I can. <laughs> so, months later, I'm in Shanghai. <laughs> Checking on the picture how <laughs> Victoria's Secret show looks like. <laughs> and the uh, organizers of this show, they are uh, collect, like, uh, called 10 models from Russia. And then we flew to Bangladesh, or Bangladesh to Guangzhou. And I found myself in the city of underwear. Then in the city, not shopping mall, right? Not, not little little store, not factory. The city of underwear. Then the city of shoes, the city of accessories, fabrics. This was absolutely shock. But what impressed me the most, honestly speaking, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, what impressed me the most is the fact that not how much Chinese factories can produce, but what the demand of the whole world made China to be a factory of everything for the whole world. That's just impressive. So I, that was my first time uh, facing the reality of the fashion, yeah? It's not that beautiful how I was imagining in my, my dream uh, when I was a student, right? So I got tired of this job as well. <laughs> it's kind, kind of tiring, you know, like traveling from one uh, club to another every night. And um, as my mama uh, would say, she would say, find a real job. Real job. This one is much better looking, yeah? Real job. <laughs> I'm a manager of production for the company who is producing jeans uh, in China and shipped to Russia, right? Every day you're producing 20,000 jeans. No, not every day, of course, but a lot of jeans for the company every day, almost the same process. And at that moment, I start actually to travel to factories, like real factories. And finally, my dream comes true a little bit late, but and dream come true a little bit in a very not nice picture like a round of the factories in the city of jeans called Xintan. Uh, the city is surrounded by blue rivers with full of, not because they're beautiful, clean blue rivers, right? Full of chemicals, full of the dyes and everything, what it comes from the washing machines and process of, of dyeing fabric uh, in, in the factory. It goes to the rivers, poison people and soil and ground and everything around of the city. Then as well, of course, there are people who are working without any protection. One day, I read the news that on one factory, it wasn't our factory, but on the one factory, they mixed the chemicals wrong way. And people were breathing those chemicals the whole day and died. 20 people died. And here I am, thinking that I'm a designer, supposed to create something beautiful, to make people happy. But I'm a designer who is creating the disaster for nature and for people. What should I do? Wrong way. Go back. I think that when you're on the wrong way, the most important at this moment, at this point, just to understand, just stop doing what you're doing. Easy, yeah? At least. So I promised myself in 2015, stop doing jeans. And from that moment, I never create any single pair of jeans. Because I promised myself to actually be the one who I wanted to be. To be a one who is creating the beauty and bring the, 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 the happiness to people. And expressing themselves through the clothes they wear. But not a one who is destroying the nature and who is destroying the, 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 the lives. And you cannot say, oh, it's the system. No, you cannot say that. You are part of the system. If you are part of the system, you are involved in the process. So, of course, as normally it's happened, like from the absolutely, like, uh, accidentally, yeah? Like, uh, at that moment, I was working for this, still working for that company, and my boss, she asked me to put 
uh, all the fabric and, and half legs and samples uh, jeans I was working with to the boxes and throw it away. And I was like, <laughs> me, throwing away jeans. <laughs> I put everything to the boxes <laughs> and sent it to my apartment. <laughs> came to apartment, it's like tiny apartment. The jeans are just occupied the whole space and it's like, okay, I'm not gonna throw it away. I want to use it. So this is how I create my brand, use them. Don't throw them away, use them. And I was like, of course, just take something what has already exist and create something new. So raise your hand if you have a, at least one pair of jeans. And raise your hand if you have at least one pair of jeans you kind of keeping on the back of your uh, <laughs> wardrobe. You, you like them, you don't want to throw it away, but it's like this attachment. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is easy, yeah? The math. <laughs> Everyone has a jeans. Let's just take a jeans, transform these memories and everything what you have in, in this piece of, like it's an object, right? Inside memories. Let's just transform it and let it live life with you. Continue the story, being with you again, but just in a different shape, backpack. I put one pair of jeans on the floor, cut them, and realize that I can, have, I can make a peppy patterns that, uh, and, and create like one, pair of, uh, one backpack from one pair of jeans. Boom, idea. Normally, when you are thinking about uh, upcycling, it's uh, something like, oh, my grandma took the sock and <laughs> make a toy, or it's a patchwork, or it's something immature, right? So I promised to myself that as a designer, I need to do upcycling the way that no one guessed that it used to be a pair of jeans, or it used to be something old, yeah? I want to bring this idea that it's, first of all, it's, 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 it's amazing, functional, trendy, and you actually will be using. So I'm not creating from trash, another trash, right? And for the special product, I decided to do it with the special people. So I met this organization, Home Sweet Home. They employ disabled people, and every person in the team has a different skills. So we distribute the job according to what they can make, and we are very slow, but we enjoy the process. And that to explain how the Flux is working for my uh, company is normally product is produced from the roll of fabric, and, but we are using something what is considered as a waste. So you see the rolls of the fabric that's supposed to be thrown away, and you see the jeans that is considered like they cannot be in the shop because there is some problem in the quality. So everyone was keep telling me that it cannot be a business. It cannot be a scale it up. We cannot uh, make a real money. We cannot involve a lot of people into it. And I remember one day, uh, one guy was asking me, like, what is your business model? And I was like, okay, I'm taking the waste from the company, transform it into something new, and sell it to this company, and this company sell it in the store. So from the waste, we get the profit. And he was like, yeah, sure, of course. Uh -huh. Okay, good luck. So... Our latest project is 7,000 bags. We saved almost 2,000 um, meters of denim and say tons of water, natural resources. And I think it's uh, something what is scalable and makes sense in this world of nonsense. And I want to share with you my idea of another one crazy idea that <laughs> I, I was thinking for the past few months. Uh, okay, one time someone told me that it, upcycling is absolutely stupid, not interesting uh, process that cannot be uh, globalized and, and, and scale it up. So now I can tell you that I want to share with you the numbers. Almost 50% of the clothes getting into, our, getting into our boxes with the waste because people doesn't know what to do with that because they are not fit or there's some tiny uh, uh, problem and, uh, or, or it's just not trendy. Less than 1% of these clothes get recycled. So it's a, it's, it's a huge number, right? And I decided, okay, if we, if we can upcycle or fix the clothes here in China, what we are doing in our studio, I can... I can bring the same idea everywhere. So my 
Second next crazy idea is to create the business worldwide, help people to fix clothes, to fix uh, the, the, the mistakes on the, or make it the clothes more trendy or upcycle it. And uh, you can find the little workshop which I was, uh, with our sign, which is means to create, to connect and to protect everywhere, even in the desert. So I would like to tell you, uh, to, to give you some advices which I wanted someone tell me when I was studying, yeah, because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, absolutely, I, I'm pretty sure that you would like to say like, okay, you're cool, you, 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 you made your business uh, work and, and then what, is, what you can advise to us, right? Where to start? So the first one is research sustainability. Is your, your knowledge about sustainability is your power. Be confident when you are talking about it. This, it's, it's a huge topic. Dive into uh, information. Be like overfilled with the information that to be very confident when you talk about it, right? Um, find your crowd. Okay, you will be terrifying when you will start to do something new, right? Find another one. <laughs> be scared with them, okay? <laughs> it, 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 it's easy. So just do it. Um, you, you, you probably will never transform your company right away so try to be consp do the conspiracy <laughs> start to 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 talk about in your in your team in your in your in your company about how to be more sustainable so and you see the the the, the changes starts in the minds of people so try first to change people around you who with whom you work and then be, think big and act locally because try to be not egoistic and if you will look at the problem in, in, the, in, in the way that the whole world is actually uh, approaching the disaster, right? You should understand this massive problem and then come back to yourself and do the small steps locally. So I have a, I need to finish my speech on the very positive note. So. One day, we all die, <laughs> right? Uh, this world will die, nature, everything will collapse, right? Because we are in absolutely unbalanced world right now. That is, we are in a fast train without brakes, heading towards to the extinction, yeah? So I would like you to, and if we consider our life like a game, I would like you to play nicely, respectful to yourself, to everyone who is around you, respectful to, with, with respect to nature, right? And I promise to myself forever to be creative and by creativity, connect people and protect life as far as I can, as long as I can. Thank you very much.